You all want to practice T27, I'll let you practice T27. And you might need to go in there for your predictions. <laughs> Why am I getting them on my fucking phone and not on my Xbox? I don't know, man, but my lobby is open to friends, so you can join. Okay. This is how the podcast is going to start, with everyone uh, joining to uh, jump around the Tournament 27 gonna... course, which you can do. If you go to my files on Halo Infinite, you can bookmark Ninja, Halo Ninja Warrior T27, and also the Ninja T27 game type, and then boom, you can practice as much as you want. Just compete by the deadline. That that uh, sounds like we started recording. Are you boys joining? Yeah. Yeah, we are recording. Yeah. We're in a matchmaking game right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. Not... All right, whatever. I'm just starting this yeah. up, and we're going to get into it. Welcome to the HNW Podcast. This is episode four of this podcast. We've got Hunter and Snaz. Hunter, your uh, your your first time on the HNW podcast? Yeah, I'm surprised it took so long getting your most infamous competitor, but <laughs> we're we're here now. And welcome. No, Snaz was there. From, Snaz was there in the first episode. Yeah, uh, welcome, welcome, rookie. Welcome. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. it's been a while since I've been a rookie. Uh, we got a couple things to talk about. So th there's two major things that I want us to go through in today's episode. The number one thing is going to be reacting or kind of going over Tournament 26 Episode 2, which just premiered the weekend prior to this recording. And then something else that came out this weekend, just a couple days, or yesterday actually, was the Tournament 27 announcement. So we'll talk a little bit about what we are expecting for Tournament 27 and get into some predictions, which is always one of my favorite things. Uh, but let's start by just uh, talking about Tournament 26, Episode 2. Uh, Snaz, Hunter, what would you guys what'd you guys think of the episode? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead I, in my opinion, uh, of episode full of uh, shocks and a few surprises uh, in a positive way. I think um, I didn't actually see that many runs live uh, this tournament um, compared to my usual standard, so I didn't know... Uh, a lot of the individual results. There were a few I did know, um, but yeah, the uh, the vibe I was getting coming into the episode was there was a lot of uh, struggles with the flying shoot, which I had uh, predicted in my uh, my interview at the end of uh, episode one with my fail, obviously. Um, but the bloodbath that we ended up seeing was just uh, absolutely crazy, in my opinion. Uh, the amount of damage that the flying shoot managed to do. The numbers on the flying shoot, pretty ridiculous. 13 out of 32. <laughs> That's, uh, I think there's there's two big takeaways from that from that number, though. One is that only 40% of people who got the flying shoot defeated it. But the the other takeaway that no one really seems to be talking about is well, that I, is, I haven't spoke yet. It, that I is the most... takeaway. Yeah, you, you aren't going to say this. That it's going to be most... what you're going to probably say. <laughs> All right, then go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I was taken back at how many people got there. A crazy amount of people got there. And actually for me, it going a little farther than that, because what did you say, 32? Correct. That's that's just insane. But when you think about all the prominent names that failed that obstacle and you still had eleven clears, it just it it just shows you how many good jumpers there really are now. It's kind of crazy. Can we talk about real quick now that stage one is all wrapped up? Eleven stage one clears. <laughs> what are what are both your takeaways on Lord of Ooh and Caden Etn who got uh, respectively twelfth and thirteenth place? Uh, well, I mean, obviously the only uh, the only two people to get past the flying shoot that didn't beat the stage um, of the two that you uh, you know if you, if if you said to someone pick two competitors any competitors i don't think anyone would have picked either of uh, either of those two guys um lord of who obviously has had his walked wall struggles um i don't even know like caden's probably had like one decent run uh, on the crooked wall getting to the crooked wall once so they were both just crazy just like out of nowhere um having breakout runs in uh, in infinite but i show i suppose that shows the uh, the impact of the new game yeah no kidding well, yeah, so we had the newcomers clear in episode one. There were no newcomer clears in episode two. The The most uh, exciting newcomer run was probably that human blade guy who uh, cheated on the <laughs> jump Hankai. 
Everyone seemed to like that, and now everyone's on my T27 just trying to get as many bounces as they can on that darn trampoline. It's a legit strategy. I like it. <laughs> just a shame <laughs> Human Blade uh, uh, landed in the wrong spot. You did land in the wrong spot. Well, I mean, yeah, you want to talk about failures. Like, well, let's just, I'm just going to run through this list and see whose name is next to Flying Shoot. Uh, glow Combs, Volcanic Crowd. Uh, this is an interesting one. One that really stood out to me was Game Man Gaming because he technically, like, it goes, it will be marked down as a flying shoot timeout because he was on the flying shoot when he timed out. He ran, he, he lost so much time on the war to all that that's what caused him to run out of time. But he got to the flying shoot and actually beat the flying shoot, which I think is crazy. That's like really unfortunate for him if he could have gotten up the warped wall way sooner. Maybe he could have been on the stage too, I don't know. It's just the way it goes. It's just like, that's like one of those ironies. You see it with, there's been so many runs in the past where it's like somebody fails. It's like, oh, okay, let's take a third attempt to see what would have happened. And then they beat the stage or something. It's just one of those bizarre ironies for GG that uh, he runs out of time like a second before he gets up the walked wall uh, a second after he gets up the walked wall yeah and then uh, and then actually beats the flying shoot I see the rest weapon mat cobra flame snaz uh, Z master strafe Chris pixel Petrillo like the uh, the flying shoot has an insane list of names this tournament and the other thing I highlighted in the episode, and I this was honestly one of my favorite like crowd reactions I got from the episode, was when I showed the list of everyone who cleared stage one tournament twenty five and their result for this tournament. Yeah, there was the, the I uh, actually was going to bring this up um, because having seen obviously that list, which I thought was a really cool stat at the time, it also made me realize with uh, the group of competitors that's on stage two that with how the last two stage ones have gone in 25 and 26 we now have we now essentially only have two competitors um just in halo ninja warrior as of right now that still have streaks going on uh i.e have cleared stage one multiple times without failing since their last failure that being obviously joey and fireball yep. um which i think just shows how crazy it's been there was obviously a lot of success in 24 then a lot of failures in uh in 25 and then a lot of pretty much almost all of the guys that had success in 25 then failed in 26 so yeah so uh, i actually <clears throat> i made i did a whole spreadsheet thing for this this was one of the hardest things to actually title like what i want this stat to be called so what I, the closest thing i could come up with was Back-to-back -back tournament stage one clear percentage, which still doesn't really make a lot of sense, but essentially it was exactly that stat that I showed in the video, which was how many people that cleared stage one this tournament had also cleared stage one in the previous tournament. So for reference, in tournament 26, there were 11 stage one clears. In tournament 25, there were 13, and only two of those jumpers of the 11 from 26 were in the 13 from 25. So that means that uh, in the tournament 26 group, it was basically 18% of the competitors had cleared stage two in the previous tournament. It's like, it, it, it's really, or cleared stage one in the previous tournament. It's, it's very convoluted. Uh, but you know, I, I did that for every single tournament, starting with tournament two, because obviously it wouldn't be possible for tournament one. So 18% is actually the I want to say it's the second lowest in Halo Ninja Warrior history. Not to try to do a little quiz on you guys or anything, but do either of you happen to, could you venture a guess as to what would be the lowest percentage? Which tournament? Uh, uh, <coughs> what? Ooh. Um, maybe, I was going to say tournament 13, but that's obviously based off of um, the fact that there were only four clears. So tournament and... 13, th that's one of the easiest ones to do the math on because it was four people who cleared. The previous tournament had 12 people who cleared and two of those 12 were among the four and 13. So yeah. uh, it was a 50%. Um, oh. So like I said, right, tournament 26 was 18%. There was one tournament that had 11%. 
only if... Oh. Maybe I just misunderstood your stats. I'm not sure now, it's, then, actually. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it's a very confusing stat, for sure. But, like, I mean, if you look um, back at Tournament 2, there were three jumpers who cleared Stage 1 in Tournament 2 who had also done it in Tournament 1 out of the six that totally cleared Stage 1 in Tournament 2, so there's 50% again. I'll just give it to you guys. It's not as, you should have got this. It's your tournament, man. Oh, Tournament 9? That's right. Hunter was the only person who cleared stage one in tournament nine, who also oh, cleared yeah. in tournament eight. So anyway, tournament twenty six oh, was just crazy for that man. Like it was just nuts how different the group of people on stage two is from tournament twenty five. It is absolutely mind blowing to me. But you know, let, let's get into that though. Let's talk about some of the the happy stuff. So both of you, Hunter, Snaz, what would you say? was your favorite clear from this episode. So we had Joey, Free, and Fragile clear in episode one. We had eight more people clear in episode two. Yeah. Which, which one was your it's favorite? Pretty, it's pretty easy. For, well, actually, it's I'm going to make it a tie. Can I have a tie? Sure. Okay, I got to put Go Tanks. Because <laughs> it was, first of all, you know, just the fact that he cleared. Right. And then that it was so close, right? And then um, I'm going to go with a guy who hasn't cleared in quite a long time. Patty. I, I, I hope I'm not confused on my... I'm going to say saying the legend. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. I was expecting Patty as well. Oh, uh, Patty too. But to be fair, it's a little uninspiring for Patty. And the reason I say that is if you know Patty and you watched him... Him clearing stage one was never a concern. He was so good at it when it was time to run. You just knew he was clearing. So, I mean, I'm happy for him because, he, you know, he's able to jump again because he's on his PC and everything. But I, I don't know. Ah. Sane, I think, was just was such cool. a big gap. I don't know how I don't say Sane. Maybe I replace Gotenks with Patty. That's possible. But I got to have Sane in there. It had been a while for Sane, hadn't it? Yeah, three turns. Well, 20, 23. I was gonna say not as not as big as. Um, but Sands was the exciting one. I mean, it was so close on the time. How do I not include or I mean, go tanks? Go tanks How yeah. do I not put him? It was so close, right? Yeah, uh, Hunter. I know you had yeah. you had some you had some big reactions and big takeaways during the premiere too. <laughs> yeah. So I so uh, I said earlier. Obviously, I haven't actually seen that many runs, but it feels like the ones I had been there for, quite a lot of them were uh, successes. So. Um, the two that I didn't really know anything about was Gotenks and Killer. But I was super pumped with Killers, honestly, more than Gotenks, because I think I'd sussed out in the trailer that you put out, um, the Spartan that's Gotenks, obviously, mm -hmm. um, and on the platform after the flying shoot, like just before the last obstacle. So I had it in my head as like, ooh, does Gotenks like beat the flying shoot and run out of time or something like that? Um, but then, I mean, that doesn't obviously take away anything from how insanely close that was. Um, but if I had to, to answer your question, I, I would pick Killer just because Killer I had absolutely, absolutely no idea on. And, uh, you know, we all like Killer. We all love Killer. He's a cool guy. And it's great for him to uh, be on stage two again. Be on, be, he's on a, a nice little run of success now. Three stage one clears in four tournaments. Yeah, no kidding. Um, but, um, yeah, picking up on what he said about, on what Snaz said about Sane, actually, uh, I, I don't want to take credit for it, but I know Sane, I think Sane had, um, had maybe seen the map, like, once before the day he ran, and then he went in, and, you know, I don't, I don't know how long ago that it was, like, between him the first time he saw it and then the, the day he ran, but he was, um, like many of us, struggling with the Bridge of Blades, and I, because me and Sane are obviously very close. Uh, I just kind of went in the lobby with him, was teaching him some techniques. Uh, and then obviously the obstacles after the Bridge of Blades, I was also giving some advice if I could uh, to help him out. So even though the live, um, like the live uh, re audio, uh, the the live run audio wasn't included in the episode, I'm pretty sure I was I was super hype. Uh, when he cleared the stage, because I was, I, I just think he would have. There was no way he was clearing with the way he was, like, 30 minutes before he did the run, with how many struggles he was having on the Bridge of Blades. So the fact that he ended up clearing stage one was just awesome. 
I th- there's so many like every single person who cleared stage one there. It was it was just really exciting for each and every individual. You know, sad for those who mm-hmm. failed. Both of you included Hunter Snaz. Like both of you guys got to the flying shoot and uh, Hunter, you came up short. Did Snaz come up short too? I think you did. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. I don't think it was one of those where uh, he came up like way, way short, like yeah. um, Flame or Petrilla did. I think he was pretty close, but just came up short. Hunter, if I remember yours, correctly. Or yours was like, I, I seem to remember if you just got the crouch. Yeah, I think it was one of those when I look back on it now that uh, if I got a crouch, obviously I wouldn't have failed the way I did. But I think at the same time with how fast you fly through that uh, that obstacle, uh, there, was, there was every chance that if I had crouched, I could have... Uh, either slid off the other side or got a safe jump and then not being able to pull it back. Um, but obviously, yeah, not crouching was a, was a mistake in hindsight. But it was it was super close. And yeah, uh, it, it sucks. It definitely was disappointing. But considering we ended up with, was it 19 fails? Um, yeah. it, it definitely, I, you know, it's better to go out on an obstacle that destroys everybody than to go out on one that uh, almost nobody fails. Which seems to be the trend for me, actually, with my three stage one fails, being an obstacle that everyone fails. That's true, yeah. You you gotta go out in the big names. Uh, Snaz, he tends to be the opposite a lot of the times. He'll he'll find unique ways to fail that not a lot of other people do, but in this case, you know, a a flying shoe failure. Uh, Snaz, like, can you explain, or try to explain, the flying shoot and the feeling of doing it in practice versus the feeling of doing it in a real run. Does it feel the same or is there some added, like added pressure and it almost feels a little faster in a real run? Is there any difference there? I, I honestly don't think there's a lot of difference cause I've done it enough in practice that I'm kind of used to it. But at the same point, I, I feel like Okay, so with the with the flying shoot, you have to time your jump quickly or you'll come up short. And I feel like you have to be a little quicker, if that makes sense, during your real run. It kind of comes up a little faster, so it does seem a little faster. And um, I ended up coming up short, so it kind of makes sense, I guess. So I, I guess you could say I feel like it's kind of the same, but at the same point... I think it is a slight bit quicker feeling because you know you because when you're doing that that obstacle you already know right that you have a small window and if you miss that window you're just it's that's it so and you know you can come up short real easy so I almost rather go over the bar than under the bar if I'm gonna fail meaning I know you can't come up short so you because you got to jump quick and it comes fast. So, I don't, you know, I mean, I guess there's a little bit of nerves because you know that's the make or break obstacle. I mean, most people that are pretty good at jumping, that was the obstacle they were looking at. Obviously, there's other obstacles that are a problem. But like the lumberjack line? That was the main obstacle I think the good jumpers were looking at coming into this course for this clear, right? It's not so, I want to see you on the lumberjack climb so bad <laughs> in a real run. On this, yeah. it once in on this one, on, on Halo Infinite, though. How about right now? No, oh, no, I'm I'm locked into this party chat on the menu. I can't. You you'll have to just tell me what happens. Um, uh, the I think the I think the big thing about the flying shoot, just to pick up on that, is you you've essentially had three different versions of this obstacle now. Yeah. Um, you had the one on uh, H4, where I would say there was a lot more leeway because yeah, there's two yeah, bars to two land on. holes to hold you. Yeah. Yeah. The the one on Halo Unless Five. Unless you're a ghost is, and you fell in between them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, the one on Halo Five um, was pretty similar to this one here on Infinite, but there was just that little bit more leeway, I think, the in bar terms was of bigger. when you could time your jump. Yeah, that too. Bar was bigger. Yeah, this more one, leave, but also way less midair control on a safe jump in Halo Five. Yeah, this uh, this one, I think, it just comes down to the pressure when you're doing a live run. You know, it can just be a normal feeling of like you go into the man cannon and you've got this split second where it's like, okay, you got to jump here. But then when you're in the pressure of a live run, you can start to doubt yourself and suddenly you're not sure if maybe <laughs> do you still jump in the same spot. Um, sometimes it can just be a simple thing like that. That's true. 
I, yeah, I, I feel like with that kind of a thought process, you could easily jump too quick because you know how quick you have to jump and you don't want to miss it. So I could actually see myself hitting the button too soon because of that, right? Well, that's the thing. I Even think, though I came up short in my run, but... I feel like mentally, it, I don't know. And again, I don't want to have to run my own course, but if I did, I would be thinking... I know that the one thing I cannot do is jump immediately. I know I'm, I can't do that. So, yeah, I feel like that's that's got to be the reason why more people are coming up short. Just because you're like, I can't jump immediately. I got to, like, touch for this weird millisecond. It's such a weird... And I, the, the difference between jumping immediately on that flying shoot and jumping in the perfect spot is, like, it's almost the exact same thing. It's kind of crazy how... How and that's why I almost rather come up and go over it than come up short. Yeah. For exactly what I, you yeah. said. Because I know how easy it is to come up short. And it's like if you come up short, right, you got no chance. That's it. <laughs> if you if you if you over jump it, you might get some miraculous save jump. Yeah. And maybe it gives you hope still. But if you come up short and you know you're short, that you're just that's it. I'd be intrigued to see actually of the nineteen fails. How many of them were uh, undershooting and how many of them were overshooting? Someone, don't figure it out. Says, yeah, someone figure it out. Put it in the comments. Um, that would be but interesting. the 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 like the absolute limit of um, how uh, how little time you have with that obstacle, I think, sums up perfectly a the amount of uh, the amount of fails, but also the people that did do it, uh, in including the two guys that obviously beat the obstacle but didn't beat the stage i think if you looked at the group of 11 sev um like let's just take i don't know um sane rog killer go tanks and atlantic let's say you could swap all five of those names out and say they failed stage one this tournament and then you could put another five names in like five completely different veterans uh that could do it because that's sure, just how Chris, close Drave, Z, Webmet. yeah we could throw an all-star in there <laughs> because <laughs> oh, yeah, right. go failed yeah no, um, but yeah you could literally yeah you could just literally swap th uh, those five guys put another five guys in and they could have cleared in this tournament instead of the five that i just said and you wouldn't necessarily be surprised because of how tough that flying shoot is man i yeah i'm like so i think we probably snaz would always point out that the tournament 27 flying shoot seems a little harder is what you said snaz right um, the one, the current one? The, for 27, yeah. Yeah, I think it's definitely a little harder. Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I, I, I tweaked it so early on, like, while well, Tournament 26 was still going when I started forging Tournament 27, so I've kind of, like, left it alone for such a long time that I can't really remember what actually, like, what all I did to slightly modify the Tournament 27 flying <laughs> shoot. But I think, uh... We're going to get into some predictions for Tournament 27 here in just a little bit. But yeah, I definitely think that... I don't think the flying shoot is going to have as large of a sample size this tournament. But No, it's not because you've added an obstacle that wasn't in your first tournament on Infinite that's going to take people out before they get to it. Well, hopefully there's more than just one, but yeah. See, uh, I mean, you only... that, And that's what's interesting about the predictions. I feel like more than 11 people are going to clear now, but at the same time... The flying shoot's a little harder, and you have a crooked wall to do to even get there. So, even though you only had 11 clears, and I feel like there's probably going to be more clears, it, I think the stage is definitely harder. Oh, yeah. And I know you don't have the Bridge of Blades anymore, but I'll take the Bridge of Blades over the crooked <laughs> wall. Oh, right uh, first podcast, so. please. Hmm? I'll take the Bridge of Blades over the turrets, but uh, they're uh, less of a struggle now. Thanks to uh, no, I think by the upgrade, and I think by the time the tournament comes, you would change that and say, "I'll take the turrets all day, every day, over the bridge blades." No, I'd still take the bridge blades. <laughs> I don't think you're failing either one of them, so yeah. I oh no, you, uh, the um, one other well, one thing I would like to say about Go Tanks that I was really ha the other reason I was super happy for him. So I said this in the uh, in the live chat. Um, if he'd failed stage one. Uh, in this tournament, in the episode, uh, he that would have been the first time ever he'd failed stage one three times in a row in his career. He's had a couple of two tournaments in a row failing, 
um, obviously one of them being the last two tournaments. Um, so the fact that he managed to just avoid that by <laughs> like two hundredths of a second, um, yeah, is awesome. Yeah, that's a good little stat for him. I like that, you know, no no three straight stage one failures. Obviously, there's a lot of other competitors who, and a lot, like the other all-stars, you, yourself, Hunter, never failed three straight times. Uh, Fireball still only Fireball, failed once. I, um, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think of the Xbox One All-Stars. Um, um, was unfortunate just with his start on the course. So he had like what five straight stage one failures to start, and then I don't think he's ever had a streak like that since. But uh, Puma's uh, Puma's just had three fails in a row for the oh, first. Okay. I think actually his fails in 23 and 24. I think when he failed in 24, that was actually the first time ever he'd failed back to back. Um, and then he went, and then he obviously went three in a row. One, three, two, one, two, one, one, one. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That was his first back to back. Dang. Um, well, I'll say this. I mean, I, I don't know. Any final thoughts on tournament 26 before we move on to talking about 27? No, we, um, still, we still got, and we still got the whole finale too. So actually, let's yeah. do that real quick. Let's say, so I'm gonna. Here's the list of names, and I just want you guys to tell me which run you were the most excited to see, and tell me why. So we've got Free, MMO Direct, Fragile MW, uh, Joey Davis, Spartan Walnut, Seeing the Legend, Patty Freakin, Rog, Killer, Go Tanks, Fireball, and Chumpy. Which of those 11 are you most excited to see on stage two? You can go first, Nuss. I'm just going to say Fireball because he's the best jumper right now, and... I just want to see how deep he can get. I want to see if he can beat it and get to stage three, and then I'm super curious to see how he does on stage three. Um, I just think Fireball right now is the clear-cut favorite. I think that's pretty straightforward. So because we're on a new console, well, not console, but somewhere, but game, I'm just curious to see if his dominance continues. Because there's a lot of good jumpers. It doesn't mean he's going to do the best in this tournament by any means, but... Because he's been the best for so long, I'm just curious to see can he can he go to a new Halo and just keep it rolling. So that I'm kind of curious about that. Um, my two picks would be Killer and Gotenks because I had no idea they got to this stage. Um, so I have no idea how they did, and so I hope I, they do well. This stage two is tough, um, as I think we're going to find out. Um, obviously, this is not spoilers. This is just my general opinion from when I was practicing it. This uh, this stage 2 in 26 was really tough. Um, and I have, like I say, I have a... I either was there for the runs or I've heard maybe some whisperings of, like, I think I've got an idea of maybe about 9 of the of the runs in, in stage 2, like whether they fail or clear specifically. Um, but I got no idea on some of them, like, where they fail. Um... Oh. But yeah, uh, I would say Killer and Gotenks because I've got absolutely no idea. Uh, they could both clear, they could both fail anywhere. I just, I've got no idea. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss the Tournament 26 finale, which uh, in all honesty, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty close on, on having it all wrapped up editing-wise. So hopefully uh, that'll be getting out over the, some sometime soon it, it'll it might be the the weekend that tournament 27 starts or maybe the weekend after we'll see but it's in two weeks so I, I won't be here i'm away for the weekend so uh you should uh definitely avoid that all right I'll try it's, to, it's, I'll try it's, it's even next it's even next week or three weeks <laughs> I, I got a day off this week so i'll just have to grind i guess we'll see <laughs> I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close on this episode. So, yeah, I think... I'm really looking forward to it, though. With the group that's here, this is a, a huge variety. You've got uh, you've got three new names that haven't been here before. You've got a bunch of, like, long-time veterans or long-time competitors in uh, Sane, Paddy, Killer, Gotenks. Um, I mean, even Rog, actually. Rog hit his 10th appearance. Yeah, so, you know, he's been here a long time now. Um and and then yeah and then you've obviously got the guys like joey fireball and chumpy that have been killing it uh in the regen era so yeah there's a huge variety there's a huge mixture of different competitors on this stage too man it is it is the last the last seven people who beat stage one all over 10 appearances 
Same. Uh, for sure. Patty. Is Chumpy. Oh. Uh, wait, did, did Chumpy yeah, hit yeah. 10 I, I for think Chumpy hit, Chumpy hit 10, yeah. He, he had the same debut as Rob. You know, it was just because his run was just straight in there because he was in that awkward spot of 98 um, where you'd had like a profile for Fireball and then obviously Irish was going to get a profile. I think I just completely missed it because he was at the start line for his run and then we just went straight into it. I yeah. think I'd completely missed that it was also, yeah, his 10th appearance. Big 10 for Chumpy. So that is the group moving on to stage two. We'll see that in the finale. We'll see who can get to stage three. But... It is time. This is the part that I've been excited to get into. Tournament 27, the announcement video came out yesterday. As of the recording, it'll be two days ago for when you guys see this podcast. But yeah, Tournament 27 is here. It's going to be starting August 19th, going through September 17th. And I'm very excited for this tournament. I remember forging this tournament with some of the upgrades that Halo Infinite got and just some of my personal improvements with forging on Halo Infinite, there was a point where we were past the deadline of Tournament 26, but I still had a few open spots that I needed to fill, and I was like starting to lack a little bit of motivation to get it done. But building Tournament 27 and getting this course ready to go was my biggest motivating factor for wrapping up the rest of Tournament 26 and getting it finished. So this is one of the most exciting tournaments. Oh wow, I got kicked from the game because I've been idle too long. Uh, this is one of the most exciting tournaments for me in a very long time. I cannot wait to see what happens. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I think it's going to be a really fun tournament. And yeah, I would. Not, we're going to do predictions. So for anyone who doesn't know how our prediction game works, basically you'll pick how many people you think are going to fail each obstacle. And then once the tournament is over, we tally up the scores. The difference between your number and the actual number, it doesn't matter if it's higher or lower, you get that many points added on to your score. So the player with the highest score is did the worst and you want to keep a very low score. Just like golf. Uh, but, but before we get into it, uh, Snaz Hunter, any any big things that you're looking forward to in Tournament 27? Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Um, I don't, well, <laughs> as much as I'd love to say um, improvement on the previous tournament, it's kind of difficult for two reasons because obviously I don't know uh, for certain all of the results in this finale. So I don't know, like, I don't know what, like, for example, the first place run, like, how far they're going to get on the course, whether that be stage two or three. Hopefully, stage three, obviously. Um, but um, the other problem is I actually think this stage one is even harder than uh, the previous tournament. So without trying to give away my predictions, I've actually got less clears in this tournament compared to the 26. Nice. Um, but we'll find out shortly. So, so do most people who've done predictions so far. Snaz, what about you? Anything, any big... Well, uh... it's, kind of the, it's kind of the same thing as Hunter. I, I feel like there's going to be more than 11 clears, but it's hard to say that when I think the stage is harder. But at the same point, I think you're also got a, a learning curve where people have now got their feet wet with Halo Infinite. So, a lot of people I, got I'm, their feet wet. <laughs> hot, hot take: I'm probably gonna have more than 11 clears, you even might be though the first. it's harder. I just feel like people are getting used to it, um, and just the same as usual. I just want to see how people continue their their trends on the new game because. Uh, you know, there's some people that are starting off better than they were doing on H5, and then there's the vice versa where some people haven't. So it'll be interesting to see how they do now. It's kind of funny that you got the uh, a couple guys on a PC now who are really guys good. on a PC. So it's just that's what's cool. That is the one good thing about Infinite with the PC now. You just have opportunity for more jumpers to come out of the woodwork. You know. All right. Let's get some predictions going. Uh, who wants to go first? We're going to alternate back and forth, so I'll let you guys decide. Um, I can go first. So unlike Tournament 26, uh, and also for this, just the sake of time with this podcast, uh, unlike Tournament 26, I actually have written my predictions down. Nice. So uh, I already have an idea in my head. The, the one thing I'm actually considering changing uh, because of being on this map 
uh, is the warped wall because it's <laughs> way harder than uh, than the last. I don't know if you changed some changed something on it, but I had a technique that's just not working anymore. No, it's wall. it's it's much harder. No question about it. I don't, well, yeah, compared to I last turn, obviously. Here, like, but I haven't yeah, changed it. I haven't I mean, modified it at all. Oh, well, then something's gone horribly Halo wrong. Halo Infinite updates, but I it. Something's Halo. gone horribly wrong in about a week uh, since I uh, since I was last on it. Um, no, it's hard. But yeah, I've got all my predictions written down. All right, well, uh, I'll, go. I'll, I'll let... Okay, uh, Hunter, you have 100... I'll also include... I already did my predictions, but I'll, I'll say what my numbers were. Hunter, you got 100 competitors onto the step slider. How many failures? Uh, 19. Snaz? 100? 17. 17. Oh, I pressed the wrong button. That's unfortunate. This might be the first ever live predictions. I can't remember if you, so. you... I can't remember... You, you've done streams, obviously, before. Not podcasts, just, like, live streams. And I can't remember if there was maybe, like, a... I know, obviously, there was a, a live run on a stream once. There was, yeah. I don't know if... <laughs> Who I don't that? know if uh, if there was a uh, if there was ever a live predictions done on a stream before. I don't remember who did that run. I don't even remember which turn that was. Uh, so I went a little higher than you guys on the step slider. I said twenty one. Hmm. God, I'm tired That's of nine that plus number. ten. Stop! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad Flame and Chumpy are not here right now because I'd be in danger. Uh, all right, Hunter, you got eighty one under the gear grind. Uh, I think this is a little bit easier than the grapple swing, even though I massively overestimated the difficulty of the grapple swing. I've gone for 11. Okay. Nice number. Snaz, you got 83. Like... I've got 12. Alright, you guys are very close. I said 14, so I went barely a little higher than you guys, but still in the same mm. ballpark. Honey, you got 70 onto the turret jumps. 22. Because although uh, I'm I'm a little better at the turrets now, uh, I know one of the reasons for that is I'm benefiting from now being on the Series X. Um, but I still think, e even if like, you know, excluding whether you have trouble with getting a jump off a turret or not, I still think actually doing turret jumping itself is still quite difficult. And but I can see a lot of grapple. Well, I still I don't know. I think it's different to to grappling. I think I could see a lot of like either randos or less experienced competitors. No, I'm um, saying that isn't the third obstacle the grapple, not the turret. What are you talking about? Are you okay? <laughs> Aren't you on the map? You're on the map. Yeah. We're still on the map. The turret jumping. Why am I confused right now? The third obstacle <laughs> stage one of tournament twenty seven. The tournament that you're doing predictions for. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Are you doing predictions for 26? <laughs> no, I'm just I'm generally confused. I thought the uh, the grapple was before the turrets. The grapple is yeah, the yeah that's the first obstacle. That's the first obstacle. That's the step slider. It's not bro. it's not two sep it's not two separate obstacles. The steps and the grapple, it's all one obstacle. Oh. Oh, wow. I honestly thought it was considered two separate <laughs> obstacles. That's where I'm confused. Okay. Ah. Uh, well, what did I say for the first obstacle against me? You said 17 on the first obstacle. Let's make that 19 then. My bad. Because <laughs> okay. I, I honestly well, you, I you still said thought... 12 for the gear grind, so... Any... That won't change. That okay. won't change. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, uh, you, um, now, you now have... You got to uh, admit, it... It's kind of two I, separate I, I things. Think, I think whether... The whether you, There's no platform in between. You, I know, I, I'm just saying a grapple's different from step jumps. That's all I'm saying. I think whether you're going you on the top of them... <laughs> I Fair. think whether you're, whether you're going on the top of them, uh, whether you're uh, not, not getting a jump, or whether you do get a jump, even if you do get a jump, I still think it's quite difficult, so I'm g probably going to be going along the tops of them. I still think it's a very difficult obstacle, um, so I've gone... I've, I've risked it a little bit and gone for a semi-high number. Um, hey, you 22. know, I'm, I'm actually surprised you didn't go... Well, I'll let Sanz make his prediction first. Sanz, you have 69 people, nice, onto the turret jumps. Lucky 13. Dang, okay. <laughs> I just want to point out that you guys are talking about the turrets being harder than the bridge blades. Now, there's a. I think a big thing is there's potential for fewer competitors getting to the turrets than how many got yeah. to the bridge blades in Tournament 26. But still, That's true. 27 people failed the Bridge of Blades. Hmm. Like, that's... 
Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it's actually turn. somewhere. So wait, I if I say thirteen, this is good for the uh, the video. They get the 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 true which the nuts and bolts here. So if I say thirteen, how many do I have left? Right now, you would have fifty six competitors going on to the jump Uh Last tournament, there were. 47 competitors who went Yeah, to I'm going to have to up that. How many failed the Bridge of Blades? 27. 27. More than double. Oh, I'm gonna, all right, I'll go even 20 on this one then. Oh, God. He, just don't start pulling a strafe. Strafe? Changed his predictions. He, no, he went He went all multiples of five until he got to the world. Oh, wall. yes. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I said 23 on the turret jumps, so I went one higher than higher. Yeah. Um, all right, you guys are very close again. Hunter, you have 48 competitors going on to the Jump Hankai. Um, Almost 12. Ha harder harder in this tournament, yes, and I think there was a seven fails on it last time in yeah. 26, so I'm going to go with 12. Pretty tame Jump Hankai at 26, but it did wrap up the tournament, which... It was a shock, yeah. in my opinion. Same. As long as you got 49 out of the Jump Hankai. I guess the one with the trampoline and then... Twelve. <laughs> oh, I'll say twelve. Okay. Hunter, you have 36 under the crooked wall. Uh, well, hoping I'm not one of them. Uh, Eleven. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, I also, I went with six on the jump hang kite. I don't know what I was smoking why I went that low, but I did. So we'll see how that plays out. Sticking uh, yeah, that's pretty low. Snaz, you have 37, clerk's reference, uh, onto the crooked wall. 14. 14. Right. And finally, Snaz is actually has more competitors out than Hunter, I think, for the first time. Well, actually, no. We had, there, was, there was so much confusion with that first obstacle situation. Anyway, the uh, Hunter, you have 25 competitors onto the warped wall. Three timeouts. Or out. fails if someone wants to give up. That's very possible. This warped wall start. might make people want to do that. As long as you got 23 out of the warped wall. It's so funny because timing out on it's tough to do because you have enough time to keep trying it. But if you ask me how many run would not be a clear because of that obstacle, That's not what my I'm number would be super high. No, I'm, no, I'm just giving a context. I'll say two timeouts. <laughs> I also said two. I did actually have it as two, and then I bumped it up to three just because of this lobby <laughs> session right now. It's actually, it is tough. I just think for anyone who gets to that obstacle, right, to time out on it, you're going to have to fail that warp ball like 15 times. The time limit is quite people... lenient. It's about the one you kind thing get on up this stage it, one. They'll probably fail because of it, right? Aside from maybe the second obstacle, uh, the I, I time limit is the one kind thing on this stage. The, the most likely scenario for a War 12 timeout would be someone beating the crooked wall who doesn't, who maybe hadn't beat it before in practice or had very, maybe only beat it once or twice, and then they finally get to the War 12 again and they just genuinely don't know how to do it. Which it, which happens. Like, that's a lot of War 12 timeouts in Halo Ninja Warriors history have been that exact situation. Um. By the way, I said nine on the crooked wall. You guys went fourteen eleven, so I was a little yeah. lower than you guys on the jump hang and the crooked wall. I said two on the warped wall. Now we are under the flying chute, and Hunter has twenty two people left. How many did you have left? Uh, okay. Getting up the warped wall. So I had a total of twenty five competitors getting up the warped wall. So now as you got twenty one, Hunter has twenty two. On the basis that obviously I've got there's less people. I've only got twenty two left. There's less people. That's less than. Um, what got there in uh, 26. But I'm still going to say 13. Ooh, 13 nice. okay. fails on it. Dang. That would be a monster. Monster result. So how many clears does Hunter have? We'll find out. You'll find out. It's not as you got 21. Oh, even 21 competitors taking on the flying shoot. Nine. Ten. 11, 12. <laughs> All right. Hunter, you got nine under the lumberjack clown. Um, this is actually slightly piggybacking off one of uh, what uh, Snaz said. So I've gone with three fails, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those was a timeout due to the walked wall. 
Okay. So you have six clears? Six clears Ooh, in the whole tournament. Oh, man. This is going to make... I'll make the rest of the tapes easy, at least. Uh, it's not as you have 11 competitors onto the Lumberjack climb. Yeah, I'm going to... Um, I want to take away a failure on my jump hang Kai. All right, so you're down to 11. So now I which have 12 you at, which, which you're at 12 competitors. You're at 11 on the jump hang Kai, 12 competitors left on the And I'm going to have one fail the climb... And we're going to have the same clears as last tournament. 11 clears. All right. Two very different stage one predictions right there. Uh, more so towards the end between Snaz and Hunter. I had 13 flying shoot failures. Same as Hunter. I had two lumberjack climb failures and 10 stage one clears. All right. Now we get into stage two. Snaz, you have, a, or we'll do Snaz first. Snaz, you got 11 competitors onto the downhill jump. Anyone failing it? Yes, one poor soul will fail it. Oh, could that be a reference to Soul Reap? Uh, soul Reap. Okay, rough. One. Dude, I want Soul to clear stage one. Yeah, that'd be a good story, mm, actually. Would be 20 tournaments later. Uh, Hunter, you got six. None. He'll jump. All right, Sam and Ladder Science, you got 10. Wait, you got a, What did you say? Oh, uh, I said zero. I had I have 10 people moving on, I said zero. Okay, so I have I have ten. Ten on the same ladder. Four. Ooh. Hunter, you got six on the same ladder. One. As long as you got six on the spider walk. Zero. Hunter, you got five on the spider walk. Uh, I'll go with one. As long as you got six on the double pinch. One. Hunter, you've got four on the double pinch. Two. <laughs> Dang. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh, it's not as you've got five on the metal spin. One. Hunter, you've got two competitors on the metal spin. I'll keep it simple for you. There's no more fails after this. There's just two clears. All right, two clears. Okay. Whew. I was getting nervous there. Uh... <laughs> Snaz, you got four people onto the wall lift. One. Three clears. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, Hunter, lay it out for me. Where are your two people failing? Or um, the, clear. the, the there's no clears. The okay. the two fails. One on the third obstacle, which is I believe is the sidewinder. Correct. And one on the fifth obstacle, which I believe is the pyramid scheme. That is correct. All right. Oh, I said that's correct. Like you got your predictions right. You just knew the obstacles. Okay, Snaz, you got three people on the stage three. You got the flying bar, glow grasper, sidewinder, crazy, ultra crazy cliffhanger, pyramid scheme, hang climb, rapid repulse. Where are they going at? Um, no one's failing the first obstacle. All right. No one's failing the second obstacle. What about the sidewinder? No one's failing the sidewinder. Cliffhanger? One person will fail the cliffhanger. One person will fail the uh, pyramid scheme. And one person will fail the last obstacle of state. Okay. Ooh. All right. This is going to be fun. Which is now. the pulse. What do you call it? The pulse. What is the it? rapid repulse. Rapid repulse. Rapid yeah. Repulse. Okay. That's right. a tough one. So we got this. You guys chat while I, uh... Why? Well, we haven't heard yours. Oh, I was going to yeah. say, I think we lost you about at okay. uh, the salmon ladder, I think. Yeah, yeah, you did. So, okay, here, here's my stage two predictions. I had ten people going to stage two. I had two salmon ladder failures, one on the spider walk, two on the double pinch, one on the metal spin, zero wall list, four clears on stage two. And then on stage three, I have one sidewinder, one ultra crazy cliffhanger, and two rapid repulse failures. So let's see here. We got a rapid repulse, pyramid scheme, and then the cliffhanger for stage three for Snaz. For Hunter, it's going to be Hunter with a big one for one on the cliffhanger this tournament. <laughs> Who's going to be the one? We're about to find out. And it's Snaz on stage two. We got one, one of each of these guys. One wall lift. 
One metal spoon. Is my down air not working? There we go. Double pinch. Sounds with four salmon. It's a lot. I wouldn't be surprised if there was four fails on it in 27. I wouldn't be surprised if there was four fails on it in this uh, upcoming episode, to be honest. I think it's it's arguably probably the toughest obstacle on the stage. Um, for reference, while Smokey's doing all this, uh, for reference to the viewers, um, Smokey knows from past history, I, I'm not sure if, if it was 13 was the first predictions, but uh, I have an exceptional record of success. <laughs> in these predictions and had an absolutely appalling run in the 26 predictions because i yeah. predicted way too many fails on the grapple and not enough fails on the bridge of blades oh i just um, hit my red button by the way smoky when you get a second hit your red button yeah i have a, uh, an edit <laughs> oh. oh my goodness i know it's an easy thing to fix so don't worry <sighs> all right this is your last, your last mulligan. Take away ever. one of my fells on the, on the salmon ladder and add another pinch fell. Wow, now I got to rewrite yeah. this whole thing. Just yeah, but I, it's right, the same we're amount good. of clears for each stage. I didn't go that traffic. Right. All right, here's how we're gonna do this. Uh, Hunter, you're gonna give me your. Oh no, sorry, Snaz, you got the best uh, finish out of the two of you. So, rapid repulse. Who is failing it? Uh, fireball. Hunter, who is your first place pyramid scheme failure? Uh, MMO direct. Ooh. I gotta say, there's there's three people. There's three people going to tournament twenty seven who got a lot of hype right now, and this is might make it obvious. I just said yeah. two of them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Snaz, who is your pyramid scheme failure? MMO direct. Snaz, who is your cliffhanger failure? Joey Davis. Hunter, who is your sidewinder failure? Uh, this also might be a bit left field. Patty Freakin. Ooh, okay, okay. You know, a stage no three of Patty and MMO, I would yep. I would eat that up. All right. Snaz, is, uh, Snaz, you got one wallet failure. Who is the unlucky soul? Not soul. Maybe. Daddy. Ooh, okay. Uh, you got a metal spin failure as well. Who's your metal spin? Strafe. That means he lifts the curse. Well, no, the curse could would just continue. It's kind of crazy how like, the stage but, one curse, yeah. But. It, has it been stage three every time though? Has he failed stage two during the curse yep. period? Well, uh, well, technically twenty five was a final stage, but yeah, yeah. So he's at least uh, beat stage two every time. So it, it would kind of be breaking the curse if he failed stage two. Maybe he could then get to stage three in an even number tournament. I don't know. Uh, Hunter, I'll let you give your two double pinch failures first. Um, third so, and fourth place. <laughs> I'm putting a little bit of faith in myself here, uh, even though I'm having an absolute bloodbath of a tournament based on my predictions, I am going to say me and Fireball. I almost actually had Joey and Fireball both in the stage one, not amongst the six clears, but I can't not root for Fireball yeah. with how good he is. So I will put Fireball on stage two. Uh, I almost didn't. I almost put Chumpy on stage two instead of Fireball, but uh, yeah, sorry, Chumpy. R.I.P. Snaz, so you got two double pinch failures. Who are they? This gets tough. This gets tough. Um, uh, Pedro. Okay. And I'm going to show respect and say Hunter unit. Oh, thank you. You wouldn't be far left field. I'm absolutely appalling at that double pinch. So. Well, Hunter, who is not getting there? Who's failing the spider walk? Uh, that 
is Eternal Flame. You know, I, his name's been coming up a lot. I'm like, I want to see this because he obviously did my 26, and I don't remember where he failed, to be honest. I think he failed the jump. I think he only failed the jump hang, but he's been looking really yeah. good on he's a, lot a lot of lot different of courses. We'll see. I would like. I would love to see it. Uh, let's do. It's not as you got three salmon ladder failures. Let's knock yours out. Eternal up. Flame is one. Okay. Then it gets very. Oh my god. I'm gonna be disappointed if he doesn't clear it out just because of everyone else's hype for this guy. Like, I really I'm just want gonna. It. I believe in this guy. I'm gonna say. Go tanks. Okay. Yeah. Now it gets tough. One more. I know I'm gonna miss somebody prominent. Well, there were the like I'm gonna 13 say, veterans that failed the I'm flying shoot. I'm gonna say so. ump double ump. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Hunter, who's your sixth place finisher who fails the salmon ladder? Last person in my predictions. Uh, last place on stage two, but just clear. In, in my opinion, will be. Cobra. Interesting. Wow. All right. So Hunter has a stage two of Cobra, Eternal Flame, Fireball, Hunter, Patty, and MMO. What a list. Yep. Snaz, who is your downhill jump failure on stage two, who finishes in 11th place. I'm going to take a hot take, boys. This is going to be Walnut. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to say that I actually forgot. I actually forgot I was there for Walnut's run. It wasn't until he cleared in the episode and then my audio popped up that I remembered uh, that I was there for that run. Dang. Well, there we have it. We got your uh, your guys' predictions. So currently we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight competitors have fully finished their Tournament 27 predictions. Tournament 27 is starting the weekend after this video is going to be uploaded. So make cool. sure you are... In contact with me to both practice the map and also to get your run. Finish off by reading off all three of our top threes. Yeah, you know, actually, I'll give you my options too because I didn't say that. Uh, so Hunter's top three is MMO, Patty, and either Hunter or Fireball. Fireball. What? I'll go. I'll say Fireball between the two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, between MMO, the two. Patty, of Fireball. Snaz so has Fireball, MMO, Joey. And I have Joey, MMO, Patty. Oh, you didn't have five. Why did? Why did you put I, five? I have so I have four people. I have four people on stage three. I have Joey and MMO failing the repulse. I have Patty failing the cliffhanger and Fireball failing the sidewinder. Oh. And then I have so spoiler, ladies and gentlemen. I have yeah yeah Probably I'm not. rigging this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have Chubby failing the middle spin, Flame and Up failing the double pinch, Rog failing the spider walk, Hunter, and Soul oh, failing the no. same ladder. I screwed up. <laughs> it's too late. He's I hit your to, red too late. He's hit his mulligan. He's hit this red button. That was easy. Okay. I forgot about I himself. Just, the chumpy. I was going to say, uh, by the time this video comes out, Chumpy will have done a pre-tournament run because he had to, but it sounds like he's already done his run. So... That's correct. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to leave a little some parts of that out. But anyway, uh, Hunter Snaz, <laughs> thanks for chatting up about Tournament 26 episode two, and thanks yes, for sir. doing your Tournament 27 predictions. Hope it goes better than the uh, Tournament 26 predictions went for me. Yeah. I think even if I even if well. I don't win, even if I don't win, because I haven't won. I have got a lot of wins, but even taking that at not including that, like I have a lot of top threes in these predictions. So even if I don't win, as long as I get in near the top three then this is a massive improvement on 26. No kidding. 26's predictions. But like I said, if you want to compete in Tournament 27, we are accepting anyone. If you play Halo Infinite, even if you're not good at jumping, compete. Try it out just for fun. You don't have to be amazing. It's just about having a good time and seeing if you enjoy it. And then for all the returning competitors who are going to be back, I want to see as many of you there in Tournament 27 as possible. But we'll see you back in the next Halo Ninja Warrior podcast. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Honor, Snaz, thanks again. You bet. Thank you.